getting anywhere. It's exactly what you find, isn't it? Uh, if you know someone and uh, you're trying to encourage them maybe to do something in life or start a new career, say, for instance, and you're explaining to them, oh, you're going to be good at it, you're, you're qualified at this, why don't you sign up and take a course in that, learn something about it, and, you know, you can better yourself. And they're sitting there going, I don't know, well, I don't have the money for the class, and, well, I don't have a way to get there, my car doesn't work very good, and, well, a friend of mine took that class and they didn't do very good. What's happening here? Every time you try to suggest a positive thought to change, change their view of their life, that built-up view that's in their psyche, what's happening? The subconscious keeps emerging with a, a whiny negative attitude why they can't do it. So we have to break through to this person somehow. We have to break through and start reprogramming them with positive thoughts until the subconscious starts getting some new programming, catches on, finally dumps or gets rid of all of its negative attitudes towards everything. We have to convince this person or teach this person about the power of themselves. They have to learn to find that self-reliance and the confidence. You cannot do it for them. You can lead them along with logic, with clarity of thought, and you can explain to them how it's possible. Another problem is that people generally, when they become negative, uh, they think it's insurmountable. They think their problem is so big that there's just no way to fix it. You know, if you're trying to suggest to this person that they start a new career or whatever, and they have 30 minutes of reasons why it isn't going to work, I haven't got the money, oh, I probably couldn't get a job anyway, or it's too far to drive, or I don't have Wednesday nights free. they got all these reasons why they can't do this thing, right? Well, they just can't get a positive thought together. you got to find some way to get this person to want to start thinking positive about putting themselves together. Well, there's one thing you can suggest to them, and it, this works. If you are a person who's not too far gone, where you can actually get the will together to try to change the way you think, suggest to them that they daydream. The best neutral positive thinking is a daydream. Now, a daydream, this is what I mean by a daydream. A daydream is where you just sit down and focus on some fantasy or some positive thing. Allow yourself to get lost in the daydream. And this is, this is the kind of daydream where everything goes your own way. You know, where you just lead these people in and explain to them they need to daydream about a wonderful life. Uh, beautiful things, love, a great fantasy of something that they really enjoy. And what happens here when that starts doing that? Well, this person will experience something a little bit different, won't they? They'll start catching on to the idea that things can go well for them. They'll at least start enforcing the thought idea that they can't have a positive thought. It might even be surprising to some people who aren't used to doing that. Another thing about the daydream, the daydream should always be in the present tense. And by that I mean don't daydream about what may be someday. If you're I have the kind of daydream where you're wishing that, gee, maybe in three or four years I could take that class, or maybe someday I could get the money together to do that. What's happening? The subconscious is creeping in and creating that negativity because they're not looking at it as something positive they could really do. They're turning this daydream into just one more negative approach. So the daydream is always in the present tense. It's right now. I am doing this. I am feeling good. I am happy. I am strong. I am going to class. I can do this. Keep everything in the present tense. I am thinking positive about this course. You know, I'm going to better myself. Look at things that you're going to do right now on the spot. Because that way, you keep the subconscious from negatively knocking down what's going on. If you think in this future wish mode way, the subconscious will keep coming back with a negative solution or reason why you can't do something. So don't do that. Keep your daydream in the present tense. Remember, logic is built on certain logic is built on certainty, not illogical thinking. Now certainty is the ability to think clearly about something right now and build power in it, isn't it? We talked about how to develop power of your thinking. So if you're correcting an, a uh, stricken or ill psyche, daydreaming is a good way of doing it. Keep it in the present tense and encourage or learn how to develop positive thinking. What will happen is as you continue the daydreaming and as you continue the fantasy about right now how good things are, how swell you are, 
pretty soon what happens is your subconscious starts catching on. It starts slowly getting reprogrammed. It starts slowly learning that it can handle positive thoughts. And there'll be kind of a breakthrough slowly with the individual where they'll, they'll find kind of a light, you know, at the end of the tunnel. And they'll start saying, well, I guess it wasn't quite so bad. And if they keep trying to reaffirm positive affirmations of themselves and start hanging out with different people, uh, get around positive people, get around successful people, get around people who have strong force of mind, change their friends, their environment, and so forth, their world will change. And it can happen very fast. Sometimes it can happen within days with people that really don't have a big problem. Some people may take several months. Some people may not have as big a problem as they thought. Maybe they're just lonely. You know, all they really need is a, a new relationship or something. They just perk right up. We've all seen people that suddenly we see them, and boy, how they've changed. They just seem to be all perky and alive. Might have only been one or two events in their life that were really holding them back. Okay, in um, Billy's book on the psyche, he has a couple of things in that are kind of interesting. One are the three golden rules of positive thinking. And another that um, he called the ten laws of health or something. There's like the ten ideas of good spiritual health. I thought these would be interesting. And so I want to go over them with you and explain to you how he wrote them out. The three golden rules of positive thinking. If the three golden rules, by the way, if you stick to these three golden rules, Billy says you can expect results right away, perhaps with your problems within three to seven days in average cases. You know, if, it's, if you don't really have too many difficulties, maybe just a few minutes or an hour of just thinking like this, and you'll perk right up. If you've got a lot of serious problems, you may have to really stick to these things for uh, several months. One is I was uh, the first golden rule is what I was just going over, which is the daydreaming. Get a good daydream that allows fantasies and imagination, building castles in the sky, whatever it is. Learn to daydream well and develop good role models for yourself. Create pleasure in your life. Daydream that things right now are going well for you. See yourself as having a great time, a beautiful romance, a beautiful relationship. There's love in your life. Imagine these things that to happen because you're starting to enforce the fact, the idea that this can be you, that this is you, that all you really need is forceful thinking, strong will. As you think, so you shall be. Okay? You'll find right away that it gives you kind of lift in your emotions and you feel a little more lighthearted when you get the weight of negative thinking off of you. Focus on positive daydreaming. Focus on positive fantasies and role modeling about yourself. And you forget all about your problems. A certain point when you're able to push the uh, subconscious negative thinking out of your mind, you'll feel better. And you'll just kind of come out of the fantasy going, whew, that felt good. And you'll want to go back there. Well, don't hang out there forever. It's just a way of, uh, you know, getting yourself back together. So just keep working at it until you break up the ability of the subconscious to keep sending you negative thoughts all the time. Pretty soon, the daydream, the daydream, the daydream will override the negative thoughts from your subconscious and they'll just break apart and disappear and you'll develop a new viewpoint of life. Your psyche will change. Number two on his list is always wear a smile, even if thing, things seem sad or depressing. The point here is that, and the Chinese used to teach this years ago, if you have a smiley outside, even though you may have problems inside, it does lead to a connection at some point where the, the smiley, happy persona you're carrying around does have some effect. So if you're a person uh, wanting to keep yourself in good humor and so forth, he suggests keeping a happy smile all the time because it promotes a positive way of thinking. And you have to learn to like, you know, reinforce that positive thinking. Another thing which most people don't think about, which is this third golden rule of positive thinking, is your posture, your material self. Keep good posture. It's interesting how poor posture not only reflects poor thinking and poor attitudes, but when you talk to these people, they're probably making themselves sick. So keep a good posture, and that means keep your head.